folks have been asking to see some of my pipes. So I am going to start uh, making some videos here about my pipes. This is a mere fraction of the pipes that I own, and I wanted to just start with these and uh, tell you a little bit about uh, the pipes that I have here. And so this is going to be part one of a series uh, that shows you my pipe collection. I know that when I started smoking pipes, I was very much interested in the collection of other people. And so uh, let's go through them. And I don't want this to be a very long video. I'll just show you the material uh, as quickly as I can. Now, uh, the first pipe we have here is a custom cob from uh, Saywolf. I don't know whether he still does cobs or not, but uh, he's on Instagram, or he was. I'm not on Instagram anymore. But it's a lovely smoking cob. Uh, very, very wonderful. Sale of 2021. There's always a place for cobs in my collection, as I hope there is in yours. Here is a Peterson 106 Christmas pipe. I think this is uh, 2020. Yes. And it's got a wonderful sandblast on the grain there. A 106 Peterson 2020 Christmas pipe. I have pipes that I've got just because I like the way they look or just because I was commemorating an occasion or just was at a pipe show and really, really enjoyed the look of it. But here is the only Savinelli alligator that I have, a 310KS. These are very strange looking pipes. They're okay, but the bird's eye on the top of that is very nice. Uh, they're okay. I don't smoke this very often. I think I've probably only smoked this pipe two or three times since I bought it eight, nine months ago. But it's a good little Savinelli. Uh, another Savinelli. This is the Prince. I think it's a 316. Uh, yeah, 316. It's a St. Nicholas pipe. It's wonderful. Again, just, just good rustication on that. It's lovely. Now, this pipe is one of, of significance. This is an Ardor that I bought the day our second son was born this past May, just a few weeks ago, actually. So it is an Ardor uh, 2021, just beautiful, just beautiful. Look at the rustication on that. Mm, gorgeous. Here is the only Chicom that I own. I don't have any real infatuation with Chicom pipes. But this straight apple caught my attention. I'm a stickler for a Peterson 87. And uh, this is the closest I could find to a Peterson 87 in the Chicom line. But I really, really like the green on it. It's not an expensive pipe, but, you know, it works. It gets the job done. Here's a Rhodesian from Sir Jacopo. Uh, a Rhodesian, let's see. There you are. Just look at the grain on that. It's wonderful. So that's a beautiful pipe. Only smoked it probably three or four times. See, the thing is, I've got so many pipes, I can't smoke them all. <laughs> and so uh, and I often forget about the, some of the pipes that I have, and I, I really have to remind myself that some of these really need to be smoked. This is a uh, Savinelli autograph, but look at the wonderful sandblast on that grain. Look at the wonderful sandblast. <clears throat> I find that pipe to be extremely beautiful. It's, it feels good in hand. It's marvelous. <clears throat> this is a uh, 673 KS7 LA Christmas, a St. Nicholas pipe. I think it's, I think this was the 22, 21, 22. I can't remember. 21, I think. But yeah, 673 KS with uh, good rustication on it. Nice little pipe. And by the way, I take the filters out of all of my pipes that are filtered. I do not smoke with a filter. Never liked it. 
Now this is, of course, Mutton Shot Piper's favorite pipe, and it's a uh, uh, 7LA-122 Porto Cuervo, or however you say it. It's got a vulcanite stem on it, which is I don't prefer. I do not prefer a vulcanite stem. But it's a good pipe for English blends. I usually smoke English blends in this pipe. It's got a wide bowl. Um, and so it really, really allows those uh, uh, English uh, varietals to come out and to have a good flavor. Again, just I, I'm trying to move through this very quickly. This is uh, 320 7LA. I haven't smoked this pipe much. I know this 7LA 320 is very popular among a lot of people, but I don't really favor them. I, I have some that I've tried and I've just kept them around, but uh, just your basic 7LA 320 that you can find in various places. Now, but but this pipe, this is a Costello. And I have several Costellos in this particular rack. And uh, what's the model name on this? I know it's a Sea Rock Briar, but I, I do not know what the particular shape number is, but this is an excellent smoking pipe. I think I got this at, uh, I did, I got it at the Mule Town Pipe Show in Columbia, Tennessee this past March. I was there with Dwayne Knoll, Dry Creek Wrangler School, and I picked up this pipe. He picked up a Meersham. I picked up a couple other pipes, actually, but this was ostensibly an estate pipe, but as far as I can tell, it was never smoked when I bought it. And so, got a good deal. Another, another uh, 320. Uh, I have already forgotten what the uh, Roma Lucite, yes. I forgot what the uh, finish was on this. But the 320, the first, first, I remember the first blend I had in this particular pipe. It was Green Dragon from the Country Squire. And now uh, this pipe does very, very well with that uh, particular Virginia blend. So I do smoke these on occasion, but they're difficult to clench. The fat stem makes it very difficult to clench, but they're good pipes, and a lot of people like them, and there's a good reason for it. This is my Seven Dante. Dante, of course, being one of the great writers of Western civilization. Uh, pipe number 237 of 700. And that is a piece of genuine silver there. It's tarnished right now. It needs to be um, needs to be polished, but that is uh, an image of Dante himself. And so uh, I enjoy these pipes that Savinelli puts out that commemorate the great literary artists of the past. Literature is something that people have forgotten, forgotten about far too much. Now, this is a pipe that I got from an Instagram uh, provider, and I declare I've forgotten the name, Dr. Something, but he doesn't have a label on it. At least he didn't have labels on them when I was uh, buying this pipe, but it's wonderful. He's got this pine cone finish on the uh, corn cob here, and there's a mortar stem here and so and he's got some some ivory i think and then a wonderful 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 uh look at the color on that stem there just beautiful i haven't smoked this pipe much um but i like it uh peterson i'm a stickler for a good peterson this is a peterson 106 uh irish heart sandblast when they came out with these a year or two ago i just had to have some of them and so um, it's a beautiful pipe. And that is silver there as well, of course. All this is tarnished. It's just aged. I, I have not taken the time to go to my pipes and to <clears throat> figure out uh, the, the how to polish all of them and taking the time to polish all of them. This is a Northern Briar. Now, I got this Northern Briar pipe at the Ohio Pipe Show in uh, Columbus, Ohio in August of last year. I am a great, great fan of Northern Briars pipes and particularly uh, the ones with this beautiful, beautiful rustication. I'm a stickler for them. <clears throat> I primarily smoke straight Virginias out of my Northern Briars pipes. I find that they are 
most conducive to Carolina Red Flake, uh, which is a, probably the, the best straight Virginia that, that I have ever had other than McClellan material. But yeah, this is a wonderful estate pipe I got at the uh, Columbus Pipe Show uh, August of last year. Let's move through this very, very quickly. Now, this is, what is this pipe? A Winslow. Here, let me look at it off camera. I want to get this right. Yes, 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 yes. This is a Winslow Crown. The only Winslow that I have, <clears throat> but it smokes marvelously. I bought it because of the green pattern. Just the, the beautiful bird's eye on this particular side of the pipe. And then the flame green. It's just wonderful. It's a good smoking pipe. They don't put a filter in this, which is good. I think these are made in Denmark. <clears throat> I'm not sure, but I liked it. And I buy pipes often based upon the way they feel in my hand and the way they look and complement my uh, particular style. And, of course, they've got to be a quality. This is another Northern Briars. Northern Briars. And if y'all don't know, Northern Briars pipes are made in England uh, in, the, in the pipe shop where they are made is on a boat. It's on a river boat. Uh, the gentleman who makes these pipes uh, lives on a river boat and his shop is on the boat and he travels along the River Thames and he doesn't anchor in any one particular place for an extended period of time because he doesn't want to pay property taxes. And so I tend to admire that. But if you've not tried Northern Briars Pipes, it is worth your time. This, now this is an estate GBD from the 1970s. And look at that wonderful, wonderful uh, clear stem on this. This is another find that I acquired at the Ohio Pipe Show. Um, North American uh, Pipe Collectors uh, Association, their pipe show that they have in um, Columbus, Ohio. Actually, I remember the first blend I had in this pipe. It was a tin of uh, Dunhill aperitif i bought six or seven tins of aperitif at the pipe show and i first filled uh this bowl with that particular blend and i still have most of those tins left and i tend to rather enjoy them i don't want this video to be too long so let's go through the costellos right quick this is a costello that i bought from lj peretti out of boston and i really love the sandblast on this take a gander at that sandblast. Mm, 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 mm. That is phenomenal. And of, let's see what we got here. Costello Old Antiquary, made in Italy, 4K. Oh, that's nice. Beautiful pipe. One of my favorite pipes, actually. Another Costello, Sea Rock Briar Virgin. Uh, I don't know what year this was made. I'm trying to recollect exactly where I got this pipe. But as you can see, I've not smoked it a whole lot. I smoked it some. I tend to smoke, this, the pipes that I smoke the most are not on this rack, uh, just so you know. But love the Costello. Another Costello. This is an estate pipe that I acquired. And uh, I love it. If someone were to ask me what my favorite factory made pipe would be i would have to say costello because you know costello even though most of them are handmade it's still a factory pipe in in every sense of the word another costello just look at it i'm not going to go into the details of all these pipes i'm just trying to show them to you show you what i have I had many good smokes in that particular piece um of course the famous I think this is a, uh, what's the, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think this is a K55. Anyway, it's, it's, it's one of the more famous shapes from Costello. It's their pot. And uh, this is a marvelous, marvelous pipe. Look at the plateau on the top of that. Mmm. -mm. Beautiful green. It's a good pipe. Another Costello. Now, I also got this at the Ohio Pipe Show. It was an estate pipe, but it was an estate, an estate pipe that remained unsmoked. This is from like 1984, 85. 
uh, a Canadian from Costello, and I love, love, love the texture of the bowl. This pipe feels just satisfying in the hand. It fits in the palm beautifully. It's a good smoke. Uh, and the rest of the pipes we'll have here are just GBDs that I've acquired over the years, all from the 1970s, and I love them. These, it's just beautiful. I'm always on the lookout for GBDs, estate pipes from the pre-1980 era. And I'll just go through these very, very quickly. Um, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful sandblast on that pipe. I can only imagine the history, the history behind these particular pieces. I, I think that estate pipes are often neglected. Um they are worthwhile because a pipe can continue living a good life even after its original owner meets uh, their demise. This pipe was given to me by a good friend of mine after we purchased our farm here in Kentucky. So uh, actually the day we closed on the farm and arrived to the house, the box that this pipe was in was on the front porch already. So I, uh, our homecoming gift was this particular GBD pipe right here. And uh, so this pipe is very, very special to me. It was a gift, a uh, housewarming present from a special friend of mine in Virginia. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the first installment of uh, my pipe collection. And that's a mere fraction of it. I will share more uh, about these pipes in my collection in a different video, but I hope you enjoyed part one. But uh, until next time, this is Alan Harrelson with The Pipe Cottage. Thank you all for stopping by.